Section 5.2 is on verifying trigonometric identities. So we're going to take the information we learned in Section 5.1 and now prove that both sides of an inequality or equation are equal. So to verify an identity means to prove that both sides of the equation are equal for all variables. So in example 1, we have cosecant squared x minus 1 over cosecant squared is equal to cosine squared. So a couple different ways we could start. The way I like to always start is look at the ones that I can change into sines and cosines. I personally think sines and cosines are easier to use. So I look at this one right here, okay? And I have to think back. Now, what is, what are my uh, Pythagorean identities when it comes to cosecants and secants? Well, the first one I know is that cosecant squared minus 1, the top, is actually the same as cotangent squared. So this is cotangent squared of x over cosecant squared of x is equal to cosine squared of x. Okay? Now, cotangent, how do we rewrite cotangent using sines and cosines? Well, that's going to be cosine squared x over sine squared x. And then we have over and then cosecant squared is going to be 1 over sine squared x. And all that's going to be equal to cosine squared x. Well, if you see right here, when we're dividing by a fraction, we multiply the top by its reciprocal. So really, if I take this over here, I have cosine squared x over sine squared x times sine squared x over 1 is equal to cosine squared x. Now you'll see this is a multiplication problem, and since I have a sine squared on both sides, they cancel each other out. And so I end up getting cosine squared of x is equal to cosine squared of x. Are they equal on both sides? They are. So we box it and say we're finished. Here are a couple guided practice problems you can try to see if you can figure them out. Again, easiest way to do it is to change everything into sines and cosines. Okay, so example two, we want to verify that two cosecant x is equal to one over cosecant x plus cotangent x plus one over cosecant x minus cotangent x. Now the hardest side I'd say to solve would be the right side. The reason that is is because I don't like the fractions in I'm going to leave the left side how it is. 2 cosecant of x is equal to. Now, anytime I want to add fractions, I have to have a common denominator. Now, notice the plus and the minus sign are different. So what I have to do is I have to multiply both of them by their denominator so that we can have a common denominator. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom right here. Cosecant x plus cotangent x. Cosecant x plus cotangent x. Remember, if I do it to the top, I have to do it to the bottom. And over here, I'm going to do cosecant x minus cotangent x. Cosecant x minus cotangent x. All right? So now the top is going to be cosecant x minus cotangent x. And if I multiply these two together, now notice they are conjugates of each other, so the middle is going to drop out. So cosecant times cosecant is cosecant squared x. And then negative cotangent times a positive cotangent is going to be negative cotangent squared x. Now I go to the other side. Plus 1 times cosecant x plus cotangent x. And the bottom, since we multiplied by its conjugate, is going to be the exact same. Cosecant x and minus cotangent squared x. Alright? Now, <clears throat> again, the left side is going to stay the same. 2 cosecant x is equal to. And now, I can, since the bottoms are the same, I can combine the tops. So cosecant of x minus cotangent of x plus cosecant of x plus cotangent of x all over 
And now we need to think back to our Pythagorean identities. And what that says is that cosecant squared x minus cotangent squared of x is just 1. But both of the bottom two just go to 1. Okay? And so I look, I also have a minus cotangent and a plus cotangent. So those cancel each other out. And so cosecant of x plus cosecant of x is just 2 cosecant of x. So are they the same on both sides? They are. We box it because we are done. Here are, here's another guided practice problem. You can try this one as well. Last example we're going to look at in this video. It says verifying a trigonometric identity by multiplying. Now it says verify that sine alpha over 1 minus cosine alpha is equal to cosecant alpha plus cosecant alpha. Now generally my hint to you is to always to change things into sines and cosines. But that might not be the best idea since the left and right isn't a fraction, but the left is. So I want to get rid of that fraction on the bottom over here. I don't like the 1 minus cosine. So I'm going to multiply by its conjugate. Always a great option whenever you're stuck with a fraction. Okay? So now I have sine of alpha times 1 plus cosine of alpha all over, okay, since it's a conjugate, 1 times 1 is 1. The middle drops out, and positive cosine plus a negative cosine, or times a negative cosine, can be negative cosine squared of alpha. And that's going to be equal to cosecant of alpha plus cosine of alpha. Now, I look on the bottom, and I haven't got rid of the bottom yet, but I see that it's 1 minus cosine squared of alpha, which is one of my Pythagorean identities. This actually is sine squared of alpha. So I'll take sine of alpha times 1, which is sine alpha, all over sine squared of alpha. I'll take sine times cosine. Sine alpha, cosine alpha, all over sine squared alpha. And say that's still equal to cosecant alpha plus cotangent alpha. Now, let's factor some things out. Let's simplify. So there's a sine in the top, and one on the bottom goes away. There's a sine here, and one of those goes away. And so I get 1 over sine alpha plus cosine alpha over sine alpha is equal to cosecant alpha plus cosecant alpha. And so now I think back to my inverse trig functions. 1 over sine is really just cosecant alpha plus, and then cose cosine alpha over sine alpha is just going to be cotangent alpha, and what's this equal on the right side as well. So we must have done correctly. Box it and say we're done.